All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to make your data table for the parallax lab and then how to create your graph from that so that you can complete the lab. So first off, I have some data right here. Uh, I need to insert a row above here so that I know what my headers are. So I'm just going to click on the one here and then I'm going to right click and insert row above. Uh, and then I'm going to label this. This one is my independent variable. The independent variable is distance, which we measured in centimeters. And then my dependent variable was the parallax angle. So I'm just going to write down angle, and that was measured in degrees. Okay, so now I've got my headers here. Uh, I can either make the columns a little bit wider so it's easier to read or I could have always uh, wrap text, which I would just highlight here and go to format, wrapping, and then wrap. And that would have, if the columns were too small, um, then you could see that it would pull it on top of each other. So I'm gonna put it out here. Um, and then the other thing I need is a title for my data table. So I'm gonna, again, insert a row. Uh, so click on the one right click and then insert row above and then here uh, i do want this to kind of spread out a little bit so i'm going to highlight these first two columns right here and then under format i'm going to go to merge cells and then merge all and that merges these two cells together so when i type in here data table one and then i do my colon there uh, and i'm going to label this it is uh, distance, oops, I can't spell, uh -huh. distance verse parallax at angle here, okay. Uh, and then it did uh, wrap the text. I don't really like it like that. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider here so I can see this and I can adjust both of them here uh, just to make it look a little nicer here, okay. Um, and then I can always make this stand out, make these bold. Uh, there's different things that you can do. Uh, from here, I'm just gonna highlight right here and I'm going to add border right there. So again, just highlight and then click right here, borders and go to the first one. And now I've got borders around my graph or my data table. And my data table is fine. I've got my units right there, my units right there. No need to have units in any of the cell, okay? Um, so I basically got all this done right here. Uh, then from there, you're gonna make a graph, okay? And so the graph that we're gonna make, we're gonna highlight the entire part right here. Uh, we can either come to insert or I can come to this little icon right here. We go to insert and then go to uh, chart. For mine, it went to a scatter chart right away. A lot of times it will default to a column chart. So I'm just gonna say, if this was what comes up, you want to come under chart type and then scroll down until you see scatter and they should be there. You should have these two right here clicked on um, so that I don't have to rename distance and angle because distance was in my first column, it's my independent variable. And because angle and degrees, my parallax angle uh, is my dependent variable, it goes on the y-axis, okay? So I can see there's a general trend here, but now I wanna discover exactly what that trend is. So I'm gonna come over to customize and under customize, I'm gonna scroll down to series, scroll down again until I see trend line, I look at that and I don't think it's a linear trend, but to, to really guide my thinking here, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna show R squared value, okay? If I look, my R, R squared is a 0.775. So what that indicates is how closely your data matches a linear trend. The closer this number is to one, the more closely your data reflects that trend line. And so 0.775 is not a very strong correlation. So I'm gonna try other things. I'm gonna look at exponential. And it just jumped up to 0.927. And that's pretty good. But let's just keep on looking around. Uh, so now I try polynomial. And it's still pretty strong, uh, but it, it's not as good as the exponential. And I'm gonna show you one other thing uh, on that one in a moment. Um, and then I'm gonna try logarithmic, 0.931. 
and I'm gonna try power series. That one's 0.964, okay? Uh, so this is gonna be my strongest trend, uh, and so I'm gonna stick with this one. One other thing I wanna point out though is your, your R squared can kind of lie sometimes. And what I mean by that is if uh, I were to try out polynomial, it fits it pretty well, 0.913. Let's say that was the strongest one. Uh, I should know what happens in a polynomial. If I come down here and I go to horizontal axis and I make the maximum value say 200, look what happens with my polynomial trend line. It starts to go back up. Right, it's my quadratic function. And that is not what happens with parallax. What we should know with parallax is that it's going to uh, get closer and closer to zero, but never hit zero, right? Um, so knowing that, I know that my trend line is my strongest R squared here, and it is the power series at a 0.964. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to complete tab two, which is down here at the bottom, which is your uh, actual data. Uh, and so first things first, we should recognize that parallax is our independent or dependent variable and distances are independent. So these two columns are switched, so I need to fix that. So I'm going to click up here on column, I'm going to go on column C, uh, and then I'm going to right click and insert column to the right. Okay, uh, then I'm just going to highlight my distance column and I'm going to hit Control C and then click right over here next to star name and Control V. Okay, I no longer need this column over here, so I'm going to click on it and then delete it. And then I noticed that distance here, like it kind of got cut off, so I'm going to make this column wider by just kind of Putting my cursor over there, it's going to turn into those uh, vertical lines, and then that's going to allow me to make it wider. Uh, and I can just kind of move back and forth there, but I like it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to enter my formula. So I'm going to click under distance next to Antares, and Antares has a parallax of 0.0240. Uh, our distance is one divided by parallax. So anytime I enter in a formula, I'm going to start with equals, and then I'm going to enter the number one divided by, and then I'm going to click on my parallax right here. Okay, so equals one divided by, and then cell E7, hit enter, and it only did that one, but if I click back in that cell and go to this little blue dot when I go over it, it turns into a little crosshairs where I can now pull that down, okay? I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here for the parallax. Parallax is one divided by the distance. So I'm gonna click in here, it equals one divided by, and then I'm gonna click on my parallax for Vega, or my distance for Vega, hit enter. It says that I wanna autofill, and I do. And now I have those all filled in, okay? Coming up to the distance in light years, Remember that one parsec is equal to 3.26 light years. So I'm going to click in here, hit equals, and then I'm going to click on my distance of 41.67, and then shift eight is going to be that asterisk, which means times, and then I'm going to enter 3.26 and hit enter. I get 135.8, click back on that cell, find that little blue dot, and my cursor goes over it. I can pull that down. And I have that all filled in. Okay. Now I want to graph this. So I'm going to highlight everything here. Uh, I'm going to go to insert and go to chart. And it defaulted to a scatter chart. But again, if it didn't, if it had my column chart for there, whatever reason, I can just click back under type and come to scatter chart. I should make sure that these two at the bottom are clicked. It's giving me my distance in parsecs, my parallax in arc seconds, uh, and it gave me a title. I'm good to go. The only thing I need to add, I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see. The only thing I need to add under customize is go to series, scroll down to trend line. Once I have my trend line, I'm going to go to my R squared value, which with linear is only a 0.464. So I'm going to try something else. Exponential, that's better. Polynomial, logarithmic, 
Our series, look at that, R squared one. And then always remember um, under label, uh, instead of custom, I want to use equation. And so I can see what the equation is from my trend bar. That's it.